Hello people how are you guys doing hope you guys are doing amazing you guys know what's happening today today i am going to help you master a very important the most important punctuation in english yes that's comma guys let me tell you a lot of people can speak well but when it comes to writing you must know these punctuations and comma sits on the top right it's very very important guys if you do not know how to use it your writing is going to suck and you don't want that so that's exactly i'm going to help you master i'm going to help you become a professional writer more lessons are going to come on punctuation mark but this is the most important one please watch it till the end and before i start the lesson let me tell you what happened yesterday that's going to make you understand how important commas are there's a girl that i really really like she asked me what do i love and i simply texted I love cooking my friends and my dog. I don't know what happened. I got blocked and after some time I realized I made a comma mistake. So guys now you know it's very important to use a comma correctly. All right, let's start the lesson. Let's look at rule number 1. Number 1 guys. When you add two independent clauses to sentences using coordinating conjunctions, always use a comma before your coordinating conjunction. Always do that. now what are independent clauses these are nothing but sentences what are coordinating conjunctions we have seven coordinating conjunctions these are for and nor but or yet so a way to remember it is fan boys all right let me show you some examples rahul went to dubai last year and he bought some horses so we got two independent clauses here rahul went to dubai last year he bought some horses and is a coordinating conjunction and before that we have to use a comma which we have rahul went to dubai last year comma and he bought some horses i did not call you last night for i was not feeling good i did not call you last night is a complete sentence i was not feeling good is a complete sentence we are adding these two with a coordinating conjunction that is for and before that we have used a comma we have to do that please understand a lot of writers don't do it it's a very common mistake please do that but guys at the same time we have to understand when we are not adding two sentences to independent clauses using coordinating conjunctions there should not be any comma for example we'll buy some chocolates and a couple of cheesecakes tomorrow we will buy some chocolates and a couple of cheesecakes so before and we don't have a comma why because a couple of cheesecakes is not a complete sentence is a phrase so we don't have to use a comma before this conjunction and okay he is everything but smart again we have not used a comma here even though but is a coordinating conjunction so always remember when you are adding two sentences with these conjunctions with these coordinating conjunctions only then you have to use a comma before them understood let's talk about rule number 2 It is very simple guys when you greet somebody with words like hello hi hey thank you welcome right you have to use a comma after these words and before the name of the person for example hello max right after hello we have to use a comma a lot of people don't do that guys you should do this okay welcome to our group max welcome to our group is a greeting and after that we have to use a comma and after that we have a person's name okay welcome to our group max welcome max welcome sony welcome anybody after welcome you have to use a comma and when you welcome somebody the person always says thank you sir thank you ashish thank you max thank you comma sir or ashish or any name all right rule number 3 guys when you interrupt a sentence with extra information with any extra piece of information that has to be offset by commas two commas one before it one after it let me show you some examples and make you understand the only reason according to me we lost the match yesterday was poor bowling the only reason and after this we have a comma why because we have this phrase according to me which is giving extra information non essential information the only reason according to me and we've offset this using two commas one before it one after it The only reason according to me we lost the match yesterday was poor bowling and if we take this phrase out of the sentence the sentence will not care about it okay let's look at the next example i for the first time do not know what to say i 
for the first time that's an interrupter that's some extra information and since it's an interrupter we have offset it using two commas i for the first time do not know what to say i do not know what to say i for the first time do not know what to say all right that's rule number three rule number four guys when you have an positive or an positive phrase in your sentence that gives extra information that gives non-essential information to the sentence we offset it using two commas for example mangesh my friend is a blogger now mangesh is a proper noun we don't need any piece of information to identify this person mangesh is a proper name is an identified name since mangesh is a proper name we are going to offset this phrase my friend dr sheldon cooper a very famous scientist has come to my neighborhood dr sheldon cooper is a proper name is already an identified name so we do not need any information to identify it so a very famous scientist is non essential a positive now what is an a positive and a positive is nothing but a word or a group of words that gives a new name to a subject to a noun that's what an a positive does okay so that's rule number 4 rule number 5 which is very related to rule number 4 when you have non essential adjective clauses non essential relative clauses in your sentence always offset them using commas all right let me show you some examples and make you understand the taj mahal which is one of the seven wonders of the world is in agra the taj mahal is a proper name we already know what it is so we do not need any piece of information to identify this so which is one of the seven wonders of the world is a relative clause is an adjective clause that's giving extra information about the subject the taj mahal it's a non essential adjective clause and since it's a non essential adjective clause it needs to be offset the taj mahal comma which is one of the seven wonders of the world comma is in agra next example kunal gupta who is the director of our college just had a divorce that's very sad kunal gupta is a proper name so we don't need again any information to identify this guy kunal gupta who is the director of our college it's a relative clause but again giving non essential information about the subject kunal gupta we don't need this kunal gupta just had a divorce the sentence is fine we don't need this piece of information but guys always remember when you have an essential adjective clause a clause that is important that is necessary to identify the noun we don't offset it for example people who never give up always win the game people who never give up always win the game now guys i'm not talking about all the people in the world not everybody wins the game people who never give up out of all the people in the world those people who never give up always win the game so who never give up is our essential relative clause essential adjective clause that's giving important piece of information about the subject people so here we are not going to use commas to offset it understood that's rule number 5 rule number 6 guys when you have three or more than three coordinate adjectives in your sentence when you add them three or more than three coordinate adjectives we use commas to separate them now what are coordinate adjectives these are adjectives that modify a particular noun and have the same rank all right have the same value for example she is a smart intelligent and brave lady she is a smart intelligent and brave lady so all these three adjectives are coordinate adjectives and are modifying the noun lady and we can change the positions of these adjectives as well i can say she is a brave intelligent and smart lady and other way around as well all right it will not make a difference but guys when you don't have coordinate adjectives in your sentence you cannot use commas to separate them for example she is a fat brown indian girl here fat brown indian are not coordinate adjectives and we cannot use commas to separate them and we can't even change the positions if we do that the sentence will not make any sense she is a brown fat indian girl that's not make any sense and we can't even use and to separate them try that she is a brown and fat and indian girl that's not make any sense 
So there are two ways to identify coordinate adjectives. Number one, we can change their positions. Number two, we can use and in between them. All right. So that's rule number six. Let's talk about rule number seven. When you guys start a sentence with an introductory adverb or a phrase or a clause, always use a comma after that. Always do it. Let me show you some examples. To increase the total sales, we have hiked up the production. To increase the total sales, comma, we have hiked up the production. All right. To increase the total sales is our introductory adverb phrase giving information about the main clause. We have hiked up the production, but why? To increase the total sales. Next example. Surprisingly, they got merit. Surprisingly, comma, they got merit. All right. So when you start a sentence with something that gives information about the main clause, always use a comma after that. All right. That's rule number seven. Let's look at rule number eight, guys. When you guys have a question tag in your sentence, always use a comma before it. Now, what is a question tag? A question tag is a small question, is a group of words, a very small group of words that is followed by a positive or a negative statement to verify the main clause, whether the speaker is true about the information in the main clause or not. All right, let me show you some examples and make you understand. You don't love me, do you? You don't love me, comma, do you? You don't love me is a negative sentence. Now to confirm this information, I am going to use a question tag. Now guys, always remember if the sentence is positive, the question tag is going to be negative. And if the sentence is a negative, the question tag is going to be positive. You don't love me, a negative one. Do you? A positive question tag. And it has to be in the same tense as well. You don't love me, present indefinite tense. Do you? Same in the present indefinite tense. You love me, positive sentence. You love me, don't you? You love me, don't you? Right? So before this question tag, we have to use a comma. He is seeing you, isn't he? He is seeing you. He is dating you, isn't he? And guys, it can be as short as a word. Let me show you an example. I'm not troubling you, right? So right here is also a question tag. Actually, this is not a question, but it works as a question. All right. And since it works as a question tag, we have to use a comma before it. And so that's rule number eight. Let's talk about rule number nine. When we guys start a sentence with a dependent clause followed by an independent clause, we have to use a comma after the dependent clause. Let me show you some examples. If you talk to my girl again, I am going to beat you. If you talk to my girl again is a dependent clause starting with a subordinating conjunction if, right? It's not a complete sentence. If you talk to my girl again, so what? It doesn't give you a complete meaning. I am going to beat you is a complete sentence, right? So here in the sentence, we have the dependent clause first followed by the independent clause. And that is why we have used a comma. Look at the next example. Since you have ego problems, nobody likes to talk to you. Since you have ego problems, comma, nobody likes to talk to you. So that's rule number nine, guys, when your sentence starts with a dependent clause followed by an independent clause. Rule number 10, before a direct quotation, always use a comma before a direct quotation. Let me show you some examples. Max said, I don't want to talk to you. Max said, I do not want to talk to you. I do not want to talk to you is a direct quotation coming from Max. And before that, we have used a comma. Max said, comma, I don't want to talk to you. My students say, we love you, sir. That's what my students say. That's not coming from me. That's coming from my students. That's a direct quotation coming from my students. My students say, comma, we love you, sir. And guys, if it is not a direct quotation, do not use a comma. If I say Max said he did not want to talk to me, that's an indirect quotation. And here we are not going to use a comma. All right. That's rule number 10. Let's look at rule number 11. I call this an attention pause. When you guys take a pause in a sentence to get attention, we always use commas to offset it. Let me show you how. Waking up early, you guys, is not easy for me. Waking up early, you guys, talking to you, is not early for me. So you guys is a pause here, is an interruption. And that is why we've used commas to offset it. Next example. 
your brother sir was over speeding your brother sir was over speeding so that's rule number 11 guys let's look at rule number 12 use commas to add three or more than three items in a list all right that could be simply words or phrases or clauses let me show you some examples and make you understand last night we bought some fruits some juices and some snacks some fruits some juices and some snacks and i have used commas to separate it he loves watching tv listening to songs and playing with dogs we have three phrases here he loves what watching tv listening to songs and playing with dogs and generally guys we do not use a comma after the second element right but when it can be confusing in the sentence always use a comma after the second item in the list let me show you why in the morning i had a burger bread and butter and cheesecake in the morning i had a burger bread and butter and cheesecake somebody might think we got four elements here that are a burger bread butter and cheesecake but that's not the case bread and butter is one item here right since it can be confusing i have used a comma here and this comma is known as an oxford comma guys so that's rule number 12 guys let's look at the last rule rule number 13 use a comma before something that is showing contrast let me show you some examples i love you not your money i love you not your money so not your money is showing contrast and that is why we need this pause i love you comma not your money he was hitting on you not on me he was hitting on you comma not on me and guys these are some other usages of commas pause the video here have a look at them and then we'll talk about when not to use a comma all right guys now let us talk about when not to use a comma number 1 do not use a comma to add two sentences to bring two independent clauses together <laughs> never do that that's a very common mistake a lot of people do it you guys never do that let me show you an example i love you i can do anything for you i love you is a complete sentence and i can do anything for you is also a complete sentence and i cannot use a comma to add these two sentences cannot do that never do it this mistake in english my friend is called a comma splice you can use a coordinating conjunction here i love you and i can do anything for you i love you a semicolon i can do anything for you or simply a period i love you full stop period i can do anything for you understood that's situation number 1 where you're not supposed to use a comma situation number 2 separating a subject from its predicate it is generally done when the subject is quite long when you have a compound or a complex subject but guys never do it a subject is never supposed to be separated from its predicate never do that let me show you an example the girl whom you met last night in the club is my sister so here the girl whom you met last night in the club is the subject of the sentence now i cannot use a comma here people generally do it to make the subject look more visible right to make it evident that this is the subject of a sentence but anyway never do that never separate the subject with its predicate using a comma that's situation number 2 situation number 3 when you guys add two independent clauses using coordinating conjunctions but in the second independent clause you don't have the subject of a sentence when that is the case do not use a comma generally when you have two independent clauses brought together with a coordinating conjunction we use a comma but here we will not use a comma let me show you some examples i wanted to call you but did not because of some reason so in the second clause i don't have a subject it is obvious that i is the subject of the second clause but it is not there okay so since the subject of the second clause is not there it is not a clause we will not use a comma before it because we don't have two independent clauses here we have a compound predicate here all right but guys when your sentence can confuse people when it can confuse readers you can use the comma let me show you how i found out you always hated me and got upset now if i don't use a comma here it might mean that you hated and you got upset this is what i found out here right but using a comma here makes me understand that i found out you hated me and i got upset 
all right that's situation number two let's talk about situation number four when you start a sentence with an independent clause followed by a dependent clause never use a comma let me show you an example he wants to help me because he loves me he wants to help me a complete sentence because he loves me is a dependent clause it's not a sentence and since the independent clause comes before the dependent clause we don't use a comma here all right that's situation number four situation number five if you use an a positive or an a positive phrase that is essential to the sentence to its meaning do not use commas to offset it for example my friend mangesh is a youtuber now i have many friends how would you know which friend i'm talking about so mangesh is giving important piece of information here telling us which friend i'm talking about which friend of mine is a youtuber my friend mangesh is a youtuber we are not going to use commas to offset this same goes with the relative clause that gives essential information let me show you an example i admire people who never give up i admire people who never gave up i've seen a lot of people use a comma before an essential adjective clause because they do not understand it's an essential piece of information and they just use a comma before that never do it i admire people now do i admire every person in the world no i only admire people who never give up so who never give up is an essential piece of information to the sentence and that is why we should not use a comma here understood that's situation number five guys let's talk about the last situation situation number six do not use a comma to add two items in a subject or an object examples my father and i don't see eye to eye my father and i not going to use a comma here my father comma and i no that's incorrect my father and i don't see eye to eye to see eye to eye means to not have the same opinion to disagree with the person all right let's look at the next example we are planning to buy some furniture and some clothes again i'm not going to use a comma to add these two items to add these two objects some furniture comma and some clothes no some furniture and some clothes without any comma understood so these are six situations where you are not supposed to use a comma now guys it is the time to check your understanding on your screen are some examples what you guys have to do is you guys have to decide whether you have to use a comma or not so that is about today's lesson i hope you loved it i hope you enjoyed it i promise you guys if you have watched this lesson till the end you're never gonna make a common mistake and if you like the video give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel share this video with your friends with the people that need it and i'll see you guys very soon till then keep learning have fun love you all bye bye